What is an amazing movie that has a god-awful sequel? This thread might as well be. Movies I didn't know had sequels. Mean Girls. They made a sequel. American Psycho 2. Didn't even start as a sequel but they decided to make it one for a quick buck. Let's see Paul Allen's sequel. I loved The Mummy Return, but the third one was just horrible. Yes. The first two were so entertaining and cool with the Egyptian lore. The third one was like something Netflix would try to pull off. The Butterfly Effect. I feel like the directors of the sequels fell to sleep watching the first movie and Final Destination and wake up mixing the two franchises but not understanding none of them. Starship Troopers. Jarhead. Jarhead is a sad one. The original is based on a dude's memoirs while the rest are generic, support the troops. Action movies about militants storming an embassy or pilots being shot down. Yeah. Jarhead and Starship Troopers will always be the two movies where I just deny that anything else came out afterward because the sequels missed the point of the original so badly. Slapshot. The fact they even made that steaming pile of garbage of a sequel all those years later was insulting to the original. Just pretend Goon is Slapshot 2 and you're good to go. Oh god, we just watched Surf's Up 2 that was paid for by the WWE. My senior year of high school we had to make a TED talk about a subject of our choice, a close friend of mine gave a passionate speech about Surf's Up and how it deserved a better sequel. Gonna have to agree Grimace. Independence Day. 20 years we waited, and that's the best they got. Honorable mention to Pacific Rim. Greater than Independence Day. I worked at the VFX studio that did the majority of the effects for the sequel. It was a complete mess from start to finish. There was constant, wouldn't it be cool if, happening, meaning the film mutated into a strange parody of itself. The Mask. In an interview about Son of the Mask, Jamie Kennedy, star of the movie, called it the crappiest piece of crap in the crap store. Highlander. There should have only been one. Right? They literally say that like a dozen times in the first. Luckily in my mind that's all there is. If it hasn't been mentioned yet, they destroyed Disney's Atlantis with Atlantis 2. It was supposed to be a series IIRC. They had three episodes done when it was canned so they stuck them together and called it a movie. Speed. I think it was called the bus that couldn't slow down. Donnie Darko. S. Darko was trash. Donnie Darko was great. Not sure why they even thought of making a second film. It's not like some of the other movies on this list that were major hits, so it made fiscal sense to milk the IP. Donnie Darko was a more of a cult hit from what I gathered. The Descent. To anyone wondering what made it so bad I'll give you a little of the start of the movie. After the sole survivor from the first movie makes it out of the cave in the prequel we start our sequel. She goes to the cops to tell them what happened in the cave, the two or three cops then take this traumatized woman and make her go with them back into said cave full of monsters. The Mask of Zorro Asterisk, with Antonio Banderas, Catherine Zeta-Jones and Anthony Hopkins, is one of my favorite movies of all time. Literally top 5 for me. The follow-up, The Legend of Zorro, Asterisk is one of my top 5 disappointments. I don't know why, I guess it's just like a paint-by-numbers rehash. All the excitement, the freshness, the adventure, the heart, it's all gone in the second one. It's like the actors and writers came back and said, all right I guess we gotta do this again then. They made the same mistake most sequels with romance make. In the sequel, the romance is gone, and it's just an arguing couple. Caddyshack. What is the best golf movie? Caddyshack. What is the worst golf movie? Caddyshack 2. I don't claim credit. The Crow. I dunno, the crows have eyes 3, the crowing was pretty good. Titanic 2, let that sink in. I see what you did there. Also, wait, they made a sequel. How? Jaws. Michael Caine on why he took a role in Jaws 4. I have never seen the film, but by all accounts it was terrible. However, I have seen the house that it built, and it is terrific. Sums up Jaws sequels. Independence Day. It's like they threw the sequel script together during a cheap cocaine bender. And what kills me about that is the fact that they had like two decades to come up with something good. Mulan. This was a direct-to-video one, no? 
Disney had a habit of basically recycling all their IPs around the early aughts and making cheap and weak direct-to-video sequels. There was a whole bunch of them. Lion King, Aladdin, Hunchback of Notre Dame, Lady and the Tramp, 101 Dalmatians, a bunch of others. Disney's animation studios were having some real trouble trying to put together something decent around this period. The one that I would say was half decent was Lion King 1 and a half, which I always referred to as, Timon and Pumbaa are dead, because it basically gives those two characters the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern treatment, sans the existentialism. Greece, even White Gold hates the sequel. Greece 2 is deeply loved by people who were about 12 when it re-ran constantly on cable. The never-ending story. Insert obvious joke here. Dragonheart. There's like four or five of them now. Only the first movie is good. Edit to everyone saying the first one was not good. Stop having bad taste in movies. Good gravy. Just looked him up. Three had Ben Kingsley. IV had Patrick Stewart. V had Helena Bonham Carter and came out last year. Mulan, the animated Disney film. They released Mulan 2 straight to DVD and it was honestly bad. Battle Royale. The first movie was an amazing piece of cinema. The second one sucked dead penguin assholes. Pacific Rim. The worst thing for me is how they messed up the sense of scale. The action in the first worked so well because it all felt heavy and meaty and rooted in reality. The camera angles from the ground gave a real sense of scale, and the slow but powerful movements of the Jaegers with the thrusters on the arms and poo, made it all feel right. The sequel was like Transformers with everything moving too fast and easily. Dumb and Dumber. Not for nothing, but there are few movies on Earth that can make me laugh like Dumb and Dumber. Joe Dirt and Zolanda. Those two were perfect early 2000s comedies and they did not need sequels, especially Joe Dirt, because that one was especially terrible. I didn't even know there was a sequel to Joe Dirt. The Land Before Time. Think there's like 15 sequels. Narratively the first Land Before Time is leagues ahead of all the others. The latter movies have some great songs though. I still find myself singing Big Water decades later. There's been a few that really stood out to me. I first watched Marley pretty good. Then I saw Marley and me, and it didn't make any sense. Is Bob Marley supposed to be reincarnated into the dog? Then you've got 28 Days, the movie with Sandra Bullock. I then watched the sequel, 28 Days Later, and man, things really got out of hand quick in the world in just another month. I think they could have done a better job explaining just how Sandra Bullock's character going into rehab led to a zombie apocalypse. The Blues Brothers they never should have made a sequel, especially after Belushi passed. World War One. Interesting. I think most people find the sequel even more compelling. But I can see how someone might appreciate the nuance and moral ambiguity of the original. By comparison the sequel had a cardboard villain who was just plain e e e e e v v v vil. It was good guys versus bad guys, black and white with no shades of grey. Except one of the good guys turned out to be Joe Stalin. I thought that was a fascinating twist. So I end up giving them both 5 stars. Thank you for watching. We upload new videos every day, so be sure to come back for more fun. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the video.